we are very excited about our recent discovery of these anti-aging stem cells. And we would like to further understand how to activate these anti-aging behavior and how to expand their function. From the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology, this is Lessons in Lifespan Health, a podcast about the science and the scientists improving how we live and age. I'm Professor George Shannon, Kevin Chu, Chair in Gerontology. On today's episode, how Professor Rong Lu is providing insights into stem cell biology in the context of aging and disease. Rong Lu is an Associate Professor of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine, Biomedical Engineering, Medicine, and Gerontology at USC. She spoke to us about her research into the complex and surprising behavior of individual blood stem cells and what it could mean for treating diseases associated with aging. Hi, Dr. Liu. I'd like to start by asking you to provide a basic overview of stem cells, what they are, what makes them so promising for medical research. Hi, George. Thank you for having me here. So stem cells are the special cells in the body that can produce other type of cells. So in particular, there are two types of stem cells, one called embryonic stem cells that only exist in the embryonic stages. And the other type of stem cells are called somatic stem cells that are also exist in the adulthood. And these somatic stem cells can produce only a specific subset of the cell types in the body. For example, skin stem cells can only produce skin cells, and blood stem cells can only produce blood and immune cells. But all the stem cells share the general special property called self-renewal and differentiation. So differentiation describes their ability to produce different type of cells, and self-renewal refers to their ability of making more of themselves over time and sustain the long-term differentiation and tissue regeneration. You mentioned that our stem cells have this amazing ability to regenerate. Does this continue as we age? Absolutely. And that's what makes stem cells super special because they are the only long-lasting cells in the body that continuously regenerate and sustain the tissue. But over time, stem cells' capacity in terms of cell renewal are reducing and therefore the tissue as homeostasis decline when the body ages. Can you tell me whether stem cells might offer any protection against age-related immune decline? Sure. So over aging, stem cells become less and less competent in producing immune cells. And the hope is if we can maintain the stem cells capacity over time, then we could make the stem cells offer the protection. Again, this is very much a research in progress, and many research labs are working on this important question, including my own lab. In preparing for this interview, I read that two years ago, you received a prestigious Emerging Investigator Award from NIH's National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, which provides seven years of funding to support the pursuit of promising research directions. What are you exploring with this R35 grant? So this R35 grant gives us the flexibility of exploring any research direction as we want it. So in particular, in our lab, uh, we're interested in understanding how our individual stem cells different from each other and how different stem cells work together to maintain an overall balanced blood pool. And in particular, over aging, we want to understand how individual blood stem cells change during aging and how their change lead to the aging phenotype of the animal. And what we found is that there are a specific subset of blood stem cells that age particularly faster than the others And there's also another group of stem cells that actually can change in the opposite way during aging and provide um, more immune cells. And their presence really correlate with the delayed aging phenotype of the animal. 
So we're very excited about this finding, and we're following up on this study using our barcoding tool to track these anti-aging stem cells and study what makes them so special. I think most people associate biology research with microscopes and pipettes, but you employ some new tools to understand cellular differences. How did you develop your barcode tool, and what does it allow you to do? The barcoding tool was developed a couple of decades ago by several labs simultaneously. At that time, they used the viral insertion site as a marker to track individual cells. So, about ten to twenty years ago, high throughput sequencing technology started to emerge. And at that time, I started to combine the new capacity of this high throughput sequencing to quantify the cellular behavior at a single cell level. So instead of using viral insertion site, I provide a particular DNA barcode sequence into the virus and use that as a marker to track individual cells. And what this allows us is a high, precise quantification of the cellular behavior, and also the high throughput that is needed to track hundreds and thousands of stem cells in the body. Is this tool useful outside of stem cell research? For example, can you study cancer cells? And if so, what have you learned? Yes, we can. We can use this tool to study cancer cells and understand the heterogeneity among individual cancer cells. For example, a recent study from my group used it to track the primary acute lymphoblastic leukemia cells in Xenograft mouse model. And what we found is that individual leukemia cells have different ability to grow, to metastasize, and to respond to the drug treatment. And we found that some cancer stem cells that are particularly resistant to drug treatment, in particular, some leukemia cells that are particularly resistant to chemotherapy treatment, exhibit distinct gene expression signature compared to others. What is a gene expression signature, and what are the biggest opportunities you see emerging from the identification of these? Cellular differences. The gene expression signature means these particular subset of cells express a distinct subset of genes that make them different and potentially may cause their specific drug response behavior. So these particular gene expression signature can allow us first to identify these cells and to detect whether these cells exist and whether the patient has the potential of resist. Chemotherapy, and secondly, these gene expression signature can also be potential drug treatment targets to allow us to particular target these cancer or leukemia cells in the therapeutic treatment. It seems like your research is shining a light on how much more there is to discover in terms of how our cells function. Now, in terms of aging, what future directions are you hoping to explore? So, in the context of aging, we are very excited about our recent discovery of these anti-aging stem cells, and we would like to further understand how to activate these anti-aging behavior and how to expand their function in the animal. And we are also very excited about our discovery on the cellular heterogeneity in disease, in particular in their response to chemo drug treatment. And we would like to further identify the potential functions of the gene expression signature that we discovered. In addition, we also want to understand whether the microenvironment of the stem cell play a role in terms of instructing their heterogeneous behavior. I understand you recently designed a course on blood stem cells for the master's program in stem cell biology and regenerative medicine. What are the main lessons you hope students gain from the course? And more broadly, what should students today know about stem cell research? During this course, we discussed the experimental design and data interpretation in stem cell research, and I hope my student. Could have an idea of how stem cell research are conducted and how to design a particular experiment to address a question in the stem cell field. And I hope my student will understand that stem cells are very rare, and targeting the particular rare cells are important in their experimental design.
I did a little bit of research a decade ago, actually. You know, the name of my lab is the Rongsheng Shu Regenerative Life Science Lab. And so we did some work on trying to understand the terminology that's used in stem cell research, because so many people use different terms to mean the same thing. So that really gets, I think, confusing. And, you know, there's so many people who are out there selling products <laughs> that they claim are going to, you know, rejuvenate organs and, um, and give added life to, to persons. How do you feel about that? How does that affect the work that you're doing, which is very serious research into stem cell biology and not so much concerned with developing products? Right. The, the term of stem cells and the usage of stem cells in medicine are being explored in many directions recently. And certainly different people have their different understanding and definition of stem cells. And in terms of the product on the market, as you mentioned, I noticed that as well. And more than often, they are not seriously targeting the stem cells in the real sense as what we're studying in the laboratory or as what we are thinking in science in the stem cell field. I think it's important because so many people are trying to take advantage of this wonderful idea that stem cells are going to cure cancer and rejuvenate, regenerate, actually, cells and organs that have been damaged. And we know that that's a ways away that it's not around the corner because there's so much work. Look at the work that you're developing, you know, that really serves to demonstrate how complicated it all is. Right, certainly. I'm, I'm glad that people start to be aware of the potential of stem cells. And certainly that would kind of inspire us for more stem cell study. But meanwhile, using the special capacity of stem cells has also lots of risk. For example, the self-renewal capacity of stem cells may potentially lead to tumor or cancer. So there's risk involved in using stem cells in the medical domain. So far, the most prevalent stem cell therapy are hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow transplantation. And there's emerging stem cell therapies on different areas, but it is well in development and have to be seriously tested before it considered to be safe to be used in human. Thank you. I find this discussion so informative and interesting, and it gives us hope for the future. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I would like to see more and more researchers involved in stem cell research, and I would like to see the public to see the promise of stem cells in terms of aging and disease and make our life better. But meanwhile, I would also like to draw people's attention to the uh, misuse of the term of the stem cells and the potential risk in using stem cells in therapy before we fully understand them. I would like to thank you, George, for having me here, and it is a great pleasure to discuss the stem cells in the context of aging and disease. Thank you for having me, George. Thank you. That wraps up this lesson in lifespan health. Thanks to Professor Rong Lu for her time and expertise, and to all of you for choosing to listen. Join us next time for another lesson in lifespan health, and please subscribe to our podcast at lifespanhealth.usc. Edu. Lessons in Lifespan Health is supported by the NACE Center for Healthspan Science and the Center for Lifespan Health.